Hello and welcome. We're here today at AFA's Airspace and Cyber Conference with Raytheon's Brian Roselli. Thanks, Brian, for joining us today for this brief discussion on fighter radars. So how does the APG-82 fighter radar help F-18 air crews execute their missions successfully and then come home safely? Well, Barry, so at the end of the day, radars and aircraft really have a nice symbiotic relationship. And early on in the aircraft design process, they have to think about radars because they really are one of the primary tools that are used to execute a mission. And so when you think about how do you design that sensor, you think about size, weight, power, and cooling, and how that will fit into the aircraft mm -hmm. itself. So in the case of something like a uh, APG-82 radar for the F-15, they really were designed together in order to optimize or maximize the performance and you know, leveraging the power and cooling available for the airplane. And so when you think about something like what the uh, like F-15 is off doing, it's going to be out on a mission and it's looking for targets or it's trying to look uh, do a map on the ground. Well, certainly the, the further you can look, mm -hmm. the better off you are. And so by developing a radar and advancing radar technologies to be able to allow that pilot to look further, mm -hmm. gives him better situational awareness, allows him to prosecute a mission better. And that becomes important because you know, things like your long range kill chains, things like mm -hmm. uh, you know, just being able to de defend yourself, that beco is becoming the name of the game. Mm -hmm. And within Raytheon, we do that by really you know, working through enabling technologies. So you look at something like uh, gallium uh, nitride, which mm -hmm. is a new semiconductor technology, mm -hmm. being able to push the envelope on that allows Raytheon radars to see further, mm -hmm. basically pushing the envelope to the protection range of a pilot, or in the case of like a long range kill chain, mm -hmm. the better you can guide a missile in to its, sure. its affected targets. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's talk a little bit more about um, gallium nitride GAN. How does it improve the performance of AESA, AESA radars? And then tell us a little bit about the military grade GAN that you produce. Yeah. Well, so I, I did say, uh, you know, kind of like new GAN. And to be honest, GAN mm -hmm. has been around in the semiconductor area or gallium nitride for a very long time. But at Raytheon, we've been really pushing the boundaries of GAN in military application. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, you know, kind of what really is important. What, what GAN brings to the table is it allows you to improve your power density. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Well, that means it allows the radar to see further for the same amount of energy in. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes really important when it comes to things like the size, weight, power, and cooling of a radar sure. on an aircraft. Um, but not only does GAN allow the radar to see further, we're also really worried about efficiency. Mm -hmm. So the use of power from the aircraft, but probably most importantly, and where we really have been pushing the envelope is in, in military grade GAN is reliability. Mm -hmm. Our systems have to work all the time. Right. In the commercial applications, if your light bulb that might be uh, run off a GAN, uh, you know, LED type light, if it goes out, you change that light bulb. For a pilot, it's critical that that radar works every time and mm -hmm. GAN helps you do that. Very good, makes sense. Um, let's talk a little bit about Phantom Strike. Um, this is it right here, um, one of your newest, your newest products, uh, low swap radar. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, no, I appreciate the question. Um, you, when you take something like the APG-82, which goes on F-15, you've got lots of uh, you know, power and cooling. As I said, the, the aircraft was mm -hmm. designed with the radar in mind. So you have a lot of available resources, but there's a market out there for what we'll call swap constrained environments. Mm -hmm. And the Phantom Strike actually leverages the 80 years of Raytheon fire control radar experience into sort of this new market. Mm -hmm. And so the Phantom Strike, if you go through size, well, instead of being a very large system, it's a very compact mm -hmm. system based off of only three units. Right. Uh, and so that allows us to put it into many available aircraft. It could be a, a you know, unmanned CCA type application. Mm -hmm. It could be a light attack trainer, sure. but the size becomes important. But then power, we use GAN because mm -hmm. it's, uh, again, the right. performance and uh, efficiency. And then, but the cooling is probably the thing that really separates the Phantom Strike from our other radars because it's an air-cooled system. And that becomes important, again, from an airframer perspective, 
because you can go into many applications without having to add the weight and the cost and the expense of active liquid cooling. Mm -hmm. But when you combine it together with the pedigree we have on software and modes and just the overall radar design, this packs probably the most performance for weight and sort of size in any radar in its class. Mm -hmm. And we're really excited that we've been bringing it out to the market and, uh, and getting a lot of interest from people, you know, different airframers around, uh, around the world. Excellent, Brian. Thank you for your insights today, and thank you for watching. Pleasure.